This week we are continuing our Easter sermon series focusing on joy. There is great joy to be found in the story of Jesus' life and resurrection. And we remember that Easter is not just one day, but an entire season in the church calendar. And we continue remembering the joy of our salvation and the joy that comes through knowing God. The first week we thought about joy through the unexpected events of Holy Week. The teacher washing feet, the words from the cross, and the empty tomb. We thought about the hope and wonder we have when we consider the resurrection and what it means for our lives. Last week, we turned to the prophet Zephaniah, who reminded us of the joy we have because God, the creator of the whole universe, delights in us. God delights in us not because we have earned it, But because God loves us, just as a parent delights in their child and a creator delights in their creation. We marveled over Zephaniah's words that God expresses this delight by singing over us. Today, we are thinking about joy as we praise God. Praise is an essential part of our faith. It is our response to God's goodness and grace. As God expresses delight over us with singing, we join the chorus, returning the praise through singing, exclamations of adoration, and prayers. Throughout the Psalms, we find words of praise. In psalm after psalm, we read the words that the psalmist has composed to express his adoration of God. We read in Psalm 8, O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. In Psalm 29, he writes, Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. And in Psalm 97, the psalmist exclaims, The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. In fact, the very first word in Psalm 1 is the Hebrew word ashrei, which means blessed or happy. And the last psalm, Psalm 150, is also a song of joy and praise. The psalmist tells us how to praise, too, not just by example, but by instruction. Psalm 33 directs us to praise the Lord with the lyre, make melody to him with the harp. Psalm 47 tells us, clap your hands, all you peoples, shout to God with loud songs of joy. And from our passage today, let us make a joyful noise to God with songs of praise. These are all appropriate and important ways to respond to God's presence in our lives. Scripture also reminds us of the reasons that we have to praise God. Today's passage, Psalm 95, leads us through numerous understandings of why God deserves our praise. It begins, O come, let us sing to the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. God is our rock, the strong one on whom we can rely, the one who is a constant presence in our lives. God is our salvation and the reason that we have hope for the future. The third verse reminds us, For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The Lord is like a benevolent ruler who greatly cares for his people. 
a ruler who is concerned about the health, mental, physical, and spiritual of the people under his leadership. The psalmist in the seventh verse reminds us that we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Just as the ruler should care for their people, the shepherd cares for their sheep, protecting them and providing for them, even to the point of sacrificing himself for his flock. And this is what we remember in the death and resurrection of Jesus. The next few verses of Psalm 95 tell us of God's role as creator. It says, In God's hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are God's also. The sea is God's, for the Lord made it, and the dry land which God's hands have formed. And it goes on to name God as our maker. God created this world. From the smallest insect to the biggest whale, from the dandelion that grows along the side of the road to the giant redwood trees that stretch hundreds of feet into the air, from the icy Antarctic to the dry deserts, and even beyond to a universe which is so large and continuing to expand that it really befuddles the brain. How can God look after this whole universe and know the number of hairs on our heads. God created us. And it is marvelous to think about as we consider the ways that our bodies function, the nervous system, the lymphatic system, the cardiovascular system, and on and on, all working together to keep us alive. The human body is so complex and so incredible. And God entrusted this whole world to us to take care of ourselves and to be good stewards of the land, the plants, and the animals. When we think about what God has created, who God is, and the grace that God continually bestows upon us, what else can we do but praise our Lord? As we consider praise, we may think to the beautiful songs that we read during Advent. Mary's hymn that she shares with Elizabeth, which begins, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Mary praises God for choosing her, for God's presence in her life. Or just a few verses later, Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, praises God when he regains his voice after being silent throughout Elizabeth's pregnancy. Zechariah proclaims, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably upon his people and redeemed them. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. Zechariah praises God for what God is doing through him and his child. We may also think of the hymns of praise in the Old Testament stories. When Moses and Miriam and the Israelites finally escape Pharaoh and his army, they proclaim, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Moses and Miriam praise God for God's goodness and grace 
as they are delivered from Pharaoh's hand. As I read about praise this week, I appreciated Clinton McCann Jr.'s words about praise, and I wanted to share them with you. He writes, Praise is the offering of the whole self to God by way of joyful affirmation of God's sovereignty, enthusiastic celebration of God's character and activity, and direct address to others to invite them to join in the song. Where have you seen God working in your life? Have you noticed God as you've looked at creation, even on the rainy days? Have you felt the care that God has for your life and the lives of those around you? How are you responding? Are you going through the motions in life or are you praising God even when it's hard, even when it may be difficult to recognize God's presence around you? Are you inviting people to join in the song of praise with you? As we consider all that God has done in our lives, we must continually remember to give thanks. We praise God for who God is, our rock, our salvation, our ruler, our shepherd, and our creator. And we praise God for the grace that we receive throughout our lives. Because God is good, and God deserves our thanks and our praise. Alleluia. Amen.